All right, what's going on guys? So me and Dave are gonna do a little Q&A. I posted up on Instagram about a week ago, said I was gonna do a Q&A. I get asked all the time to do them. So figured we get Dave here, we do a Q&A. So we're literally just gonna jump right into it and get to the first question. All right, so the first question is gonna be, how do we go about editing our videos? Like how do we learn how to edit and things of that nature? I'm gonna let you start because basically everything that I know is from this dude right here, so. I mean, when it came to just starting off editing, I was like, anywhere from like 10, 11, 12, nine years old, something like that. It's like, I love playing around with cameras, just making cool videos. My old video with Jenna, like in a dinosaur costume, like, ah. Yeah, I would is, probably send you some, you could like overlap it here. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put the, your old YouTube channel in the description. That's cool. But yeah, so then when I started getting say fitness and all that, obviously I had the advantage of already like knowing the basics and fundamentals of cameras and editing, but now I use a Mac, I use Final Cut Pro, and I want to learn how to use Premiere because it's more advanced. But right now, everything I've done and everything you guys have seen has been on a, Final Cut Pro. So then a lot of people ask, oh, can you do like an in-depth video on how to edit or like how do you do this, this, and that? And the thing is like I can't like say, oh, like how I edit. I don't really know how to answer that question. Like what I do know is tools and ways to do things right. And then once you have a collective knowledge base on that, then when you begin to edit and you let the creative juices flow and you just like do things. So you'll have an idea of how something wants to work. You'll try a bunch of different things at once. I know a big problem people have, I was like even telling this to Dylan, while you're editing, literally just don't even be afraid to make mistakes. Just do something really quick, see how it looks. It doesn't look right, switch it up and just keep doing it again and again and again until you watch it and it just like looks right. You like, cause sometimes it's hard to pinpoint the flaws, but you'll see something, you'll know, like either the music doesn't add up or something doesn't cut right or doesn't transition right and you just do it till it's good and then you just... Uh, one, thing I yeah, one thing I will say though is you need to make sure that the beat matches with whatever, let's just say if you're doing a lifting footage, right? You don't wanna have a massive drop just in the middle of nowhere, like the music has to match with what's actually going on in the video. And another thing I would, I would say honestly, uh, things that like have made my editing better are just looking into, like if you already know how to edit a little bit, like you've messed around with Final Cut Pro, things like that, which is very simple to do, like literally Command B, Command Z, a few cuts, to throw like some, tr like look into uh, throwing some transitions into your uh, videos, those can spice things up a lot, learning how to color grade your footage, which I don't really know much about, but just little things and like that. Another like super basic thing is I hate when I see is you're watching a YouTube video, right, at a certain volume, not all of a sudden it cuts to another clip and it's like screaming so loud right. and you have to adjust the speaker that just like interrupts the viewing experience, interrupts the viewer retention, like make sure your audio track is consistent so you can start the video from start to end without having to adjust the audio as a viewer. S simple thing, but it's really important. Yeah, transitions, color grading, like those are two things you could look into to try to make your editing a little bit better, but I think that's pretty much it for a little short answer. All right, so the next question, someone asked us, how's our training been going lately? Like what programs are we running, that type of thing? So you can start it off a little bit. I mean, for me, shit. Yeah, training's not really, I can't say training's not been going that well because training hasn't really been going on at all, <laughs> especially lately, like, Maybe in, in like the past few months, just a lot of travel, a lot of stress. Like I was a lot kind of, of new houses, well, just a lot of things going on. A lot of things going on. So it was, I was training, but it was kind of shitty. But for the past like maybe like two or three weeks, I virtually like haven't really trained at all because I've been very, very preoccupied with certain activities and events, mm -hmm. which they'll find out. Yeah. In my next video. But one thing I would say, like really quickly, just to help people out, like you know how, like for example, both of us have gone through ruts where we're not necessarily, you know, training as good as we want to be training or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're traveling or doing whatever, but I, a lot of the times I feel like people like kind of lose motivation or like they don't really know what to do when they go back. But in my opinion, what I've always realized, like the best thing to do is, is like if you're in that rut, right. And like, you know, you're doing a program like super half ass, you should just like set a time where you know that you can be consistent again and then you know restart the whatever program you're running like start on a monday and just absolutely grind it out like you're going to be super sore doing like a four by ten and then a four by ten like another type of lift so i would recommend you kind of just go right back into it and try to like yeah. just prime and, your cns again and like, and like another thing i feel like a lot of people like really emotionally tie down their sense of well-being with like how like their physical body looks and i'm not saying that you should stop training or you shouldn't train like how i'm in my case right here but like right now like i'm haven't eaten anything today like yesterday i've been just working all day like skinny flat like i'm like ridiculously weak right now but like i just it doesn't like affect my sense of well-being because i realize mm -hmm. that like it'll training be, is just one feel. aspect in life and like when i do start training again which will be relatively soon when like my gym comes in that like i just like get like all my gains back so. you'll be bigger and stronger than you ever were like within a month so realistically yeah. it's, it's not the absolute end of the world but when we were younger like when we were in high school yeah like when we were in high school like 
we both, we had to walk in school like on a hot summer day in a hoodie because we were literally, oh my God, I'm too flat, I'm too small. When in reality, we were way bigger than like the average person, which it shouldn't matter regardless. You, like, it, I mean, how big you're looking on a specific day or in a specific yeah, shirt or no situation. Like living in like a very yeah. small, narrow world yeah. of just like... So if you feel that way though, but if you do feel that way, you should try to eliminate that. Like if you're like, I can't go to school wearing a t-shirt, I can't go here wearing a tank top, just do it anyway and try to kind of like and try to basically drop your ego, leave it at the door, and not only care about training in life, because there's more to life. So the next question is, how long have you been friends, and how long have we been doing YouTube for? I mean, I guess I'll let you start this one again, because you kind of did start doing it a lot earlier than I did. So. I mean, we met in high school. It was like sophomore was year. Sophomore year. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't, I'm, I, I forget if I had a YouTube channel. I don't know if I had one or not. No, at you, point, you didn't have like you even, didn't but, do your but, friends. But if I did, like it yeah. was just like uploading just like random like garage videos, me working out just for the sake of like tracking progress and yeah. like just the fun of uploading. Like no future plans in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, then we met through high school. Uh, we obviously like really really enjoyed the gym. We actually met in the gym, and <laughs> our entire friendship just pretty much exclusively revolved on talking all things gym related, like and nutrition and like all of it. So. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we were able to, like, connect on that, like, hobby, yeah. like, so aggressively was yeah. very cool. Very it was cool because, like, not a lot of people, like, in our school would, like, aggressively. Yeah. No, 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 like, 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 there was, there yeah. was, there was, like, different, like, like, yeah. hierarchies of, like, people that would like, oh, yeah. lift in school. Like, you were, like, people, like, sports that lift. Yeah, exactly. People that right. recreation lift, people that kind of lift, right. right? And then we are literally, like, on nine realms, like, above that. <laughs> and not, like, it was better or worse, but in terms of, like, how hard how we much were we training, care, how right? correct yeah. we were training. Like, yeah. it was literally, like, yeah. the objective was, like, maximum muscle, like, over everything. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure, like, I feel, like, so when I started my YouTube was, I think it was about almost three years ago. I started my YouTube the summer that I graduated high school. So I was 18 at the time when I started my YouTube. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you were a lot younger. You were a lot, you, like, you, you did your, you, he did his first big video that actually, like, really propelled him into social media when when uh when you broke your leg when you fucking snapped the yeah, weirdest like bone in your body 16, 16 yeah 16 so. 17 so you got into it 16 17 i've been doing it for since i was 18 i'm now 20 he's also 20 so yeah all right so next question if you were to choose a career outside of the fitness industry what would it be and okay also so next question if you were to choose one career outside of the fitness industry what would it be and why so for me, I was just never someone who was like super into schooling. I would say like maybe I would want to be a psychologist because in the past, like I've suffered from anxiety and other things like that. And I can like relate to people. Um, and I think being a psychologist would be pretty cool. My cousin's that. So I, I know that like he really loves doing that. But realistically, I'm, I was just never really that great in school. I have horrible ADHD, like level 10 out of 10 ADHD. So I just studying for me and things like that was just really hard. So what I probably would have ended up doing was going along the lines of being like a police officer or a firefighter or something that's like super hands-on and that you don't have to necessarily get a degree for. That's probably where I would see myself if I wasn't like doing YouTube, online coaching, that type of stuff, honestly. For me, it'd be something involving like technology, maybe like in IT or like, like now looking yeah. at it, definitely like cinematography, editing, oh, yeah. things like that, like some like creative type thing, also potentially involving like electronics. Quentin yeah. Tarantino movie editing. Yeah. Um, Next question. Do you guys like being in New Jersey or do we have plans on leaving um, in the future? Um, I mean, for me, I hope not for you. I mean, for me, there's a like big pros and cons charts to moving. Probably more lean on the con side. Um, I mean, just like one big thing is like the fact that like my family's here. The only really bad thing about New Jersey is the fact that it gets really, really tragically cold in the winter. Horrible seasonal depression. Yeah, yeah. really, really bad. But I probably foresee for like the future how I see it now, me staying in New Jersey for quite a bit. But yeah, you let, literally never know anything could change, but I don't have any like desires to move to yeah. like another location without giving it like too much thought. Yeah, no, I'm in the same boat. I mean, for me, just the fact that friends and family are here, we're right near the beach, so in the summer months, it's awesome. We're pretty close to like snowboarding mountains, so in the winter, you can just take a drive up and go snowboarding. Um, I, I feel like I see like a lot of people like uh, who do social media, like they wanna gravitate towards places that like have more interesting things going on and stuff like that. And I can definitely understand that. So like, I don't know, maybe in the future, I'll move somewhere where it's like warm year round so I don't have that horrible cold winter season. But for now, 
I also, I like where I am out in, in New Jersey. All right, so the next question is gonna help you guys out tremendously, and that is some tips for some half natty photos. Can you, you start this one, or? I mean, I'm you are the right. king at, you are the king. You are the king of the half natty. I mean, like for me, every time I take pictures, my perception, like the way I'm seeing it is, I'm not trying to uh, predominantly like, capture like the extreme musculature, but I do in like some pictures, I just see it as, okay, I have a body, right? And I wanna make the most artistic, like aesthetically pleasing picture in any way, like as, as much as I can with the tools that I have. So obviously the lighting comes into play, like your muscle inserts are something different on a different lighting, like the way you pose, the way your face is, where it's angling, how the background goes in, like how you edit a picture. I just like see it all as like, a, like a work of art rather than just like a picture, like showing my physique, which I mean it is mm -hmm. like on a surface level sense. But well, that makes it, it, it so it, much better, you're saying, like having like the background, have, making sure like, you know, you work around the, the camera that you may have on hand, things like that, the lighting. Yeah, yeah. but like in terms of just like physique, like the half natty pictures, yeah. I mean, if you take pictures on iPhones, I know you put a landscape and for example, if Dill's going to take a picture like on this side, make sure the, the <laughs> lens is over here rather than over here. Because then there's be. something called barrel distortion where towards the edges of a shot, it kind of gets like a warp effect. So it gets like stretched out. So that's why, for example... I could just be sitting here with like lanky arms, right? From like a regular camera focal length, like relatively in the middle of the shot. Then if I were to like take my off and go to the bathroom, literally flex my arm, stick it out more, then it would literally just look like ridiculously big. But I mean, the thing is everyone has a different structure, different insertions, yeah. everyone looks different on different lighting. You have to like play around with it, like make it like a game. Yeah. So it just like, takes, and everyone, yeah. there's like not a one size fits all thing. Like I said, everyone's different, you have to, to, everyone's gonna look better in some poses rather than others, like depending on them. Yeah. So you just have to work with what you got and yeah. do the best you can. That's all I would say. Like just like just to kind of end that one is to say like, you gotta find what's gonna look best for you personally. Like if you if you see a picture of Dave or me and you're like, oh, I'm gonna take a picture like that and try to get it like that, it may not be your best pose. Like for example, my like if you go on Dave's Instagram, you're not gonna see too many frontmost musculars because it's not necessarily his best pose. You're gonna see a bunch of different ab poses, things like that, that are gonna like accentuate his physique the best. So you just kind of like figure out what your best body parts are and then try to kind of get your angles and everything in tune to your best body parts. The next question I'm gonna answer, and honestly guys, like you spam me even in my comments about this, which is like, why does Dave not film as many YouTube videos as maybe he used to in the past? So you wanna give him a little answer? Well, I mean, it's kind of like a lot of things and mostly just like because i recently found out i had adhd too and like my conception of adhd was just oh like that loud annoying kid in class who just doesn't shut up and causes trouble but that's literally not what adhd is whatsoever it's kind of more of like an executive function disorder like it's really common but anyway the point is if you have adhd you'll just do a whole lot of thinking thinking in loops and then just like not end up doing anything so instead of the whole do more think less like the people with adhd that shattered but things like not knowing like what's a necessary like film because I would go through kind of like a depressed kind of state and just things going on traveling all the time my life not having like a strict like, consistency to it like mm -hmm. I kind of wish I was in Dylan shoes in the sense that like, he yeah. gets to be home for like, yeah. a prolonged period of time which is like literally what I want like I'm traveling yeah. almost every other month yeah. which like puts like massive well that puts a massive routine. like strain on your training too so then when you do get to have a good session it's kind of like to whip your camera out and then like that type of thing is going to kind of kill the workout and that's kind of yeah. That's not a big issue. All right, so the next question is, which I get a lot, is what is my opinion on the hate in the fitness industry and just kind of on social media in general, maybe like the hate that I've received or like I've seen him receive or other social people that are on social media. And what I would say to that is, personally, I just don't really put too much focus into it because the people that are like, let's just say hating and those types of things, most of the time, they're kind of just trying to do it to like, troll a little bit like they don't mean it in a super horrible negative way like they just want to get some views get some interaction on the internet and they may even honestly be a fan of the person that they're doing it to they want a reaction from the person so i know for me personally if it happens to me or if i see it happening i never take it too personally or you know hold a super hardcore grudge on anybody because of it because of the reasons that i just said I mean, I don't know. Like for me, like I'm like a huge fan of YouTube. I'm on it all the time. Like I watch yeah. a lot of things, but I I hardly ever ever in my life have ever like left a comment on a video. Like never. The thing is, I comments are like a great place for like healthy discussion amongst people. Like people supporting other people. Oh, yeah. That's like great and all. But like another huge majority of like people that are commenting 
is like relatively like in the negative realm. So then when you really boil it down fundamentally, it comes down to a negative aspect of them like manifesting itself like in the comments, like in a way to try to like, this sounds like cliche, but like to yeah. bring like another person down. Or make themselves feel better, obviously. It's like, it is Yeah, cliche. and then there's like obviously like a lot of like misinformation, a lot of like arrogance and stuff. But when it comes to just like negative comments in general, like I, if I just like read one all like, like, oh, like you're stupid, like you're ugly, just like you literally, you just like, yeah. when I scroll by, like it literally just like I forget about it, like, it yeah. doesn't affect me. But then there are comments, right, which I wouldn't classify in the same category as haters I just did like a minute ago, but like <laughs> that have like actual proper, like constructive criticism, like mm-hmm. those I really enjoy, like I take to heart and like I listen to like very carefully. Yeah. So you just gotta think, guys, like, I mean, if you're gonna leave a comment on a video, and you don't like something in the video or you feel like something could be changed, try to leave a comment that's not, fuck you, I fucking hate you, everybody hate this person. Like actually try to leave a comment that that person could read and be like, oh wow, like this person kind of does have a point. Maybe I shouldn't do this, maybe I shouldn't say this, maybe I should do this differently in my video, whatever the case may be. But I think that's gonna wrap this Q&A up, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and See you guys in the next video, and you guys will see Dave in four to five months when he uploads again. All right.